So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? <laughs> Hi villains and welcome to For the Love of Paul McGrath podcast. Back again with another transfer special. A lot of rumors going around in the transfer market at the moment. Aston Villa obviously looking to improve on their attacking impetus. And one of the most recent rumors that's come down the pipe over the course of the last few days has been Bayer Leverkusen's Jamaican attacker Leon Bailey. So Wanted to pop on just to have a little look at him from a statistical point of view. I've watched five games of his over the last couple of days since the rumours broke. And uh, I'm really liking what I see from him, especially from a statistical point of view. There are some really nice ones there. And also from an actual physical point of view of what I've seen of him on the tape. But I'm not going to sit here and just speak to you on it. As you know, I'm going to bring some facts, stats and some graphics. So let's pop those up on the screen. So firstly, who is Leon Bailey? So Leon Bailey is a Jamaican uh, player. He obviously plays up by our Lever Leverkusen, predominantly plays from the left or the right wing. And that's important when we look at this specifically with regards to what years he's played for by our Leverkusen. He's 23 years of age. Uh, he's currently at the Gold Cup with Jamaica at the moment. I um, haven't seen any of the games he's played for Jamaica, specifically in this Gold Cup, but it might be one for any of you guys who are interested in that that can go and uh, maybe stay up some night and watch one of those games. I've uh, stayed up a small bit uh, too much during the Copa America to keep an eye on um, on Emmy Martinez and Douglas Louise. So I let you guys uh, stay up and watch uh, Jamaica in the Gold Cup. But as I said, he is uh, uh, plays does play on the right or the left wing. Sometimes very sparingly plays up front as well. He's left footed. He's five foot ten, so he's a nice size. And some of the similar players that I I would class him in the same brigade as would be uh, Amine Amin Gori from um, Nice. A uh, young player from Nice, obviously had a sterling year last season, has been linked with a lot of uh, a lot of big teams this summer. And also Raheem Sterling, everybody, somebody who everybody is familiar with. And no, it's not just the fact that both of them are of Caribbean extract and both of them, um, I think Raheem Sterling was actually Jamaican as well. And they, they um, but they do share some physical attributes and physical similarities and also the way that they play their direct running style and uh, the fact that they've got some nice close control and that they do add that little spark or that little flair when they are on the ball is quite evident as well so let's just take a little look at some numbers there for leon bailey so in his career he has played 173 games scoring 36 goals with 32 assists i've taken his last three seasons predominantly uh last season where he had his best season to date with 30 games scoring nine goals with eight assists which is a very good return um he had that with regards to to goal contributions last season it was quite it was quite impressive. I didn't get a goal contribution once every 125 minutes. So every game and a half, he was responsible for either scoring or creating a goal, which to me is a, you know, is 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 quite a good return. Um, in 2019, 2020, he played played less games. You know, he 20, 22 games in and out of the team. There was rumors he wanted to leave the team at that stage. Leverkusen played him in a kind of a rotational piece. He did have some niggling injuries as well. Still contributed with five goals and three assists in 2019, 2020. And then in 2018, 2019, he played 29 games. So getting close to, to that 30 game mark um, in that season with five goals and one assist. So looking at his heat maps underneath, I think it's pretty obvious um, that he is a wing player for certain. Now, we will take a look at his specific spread of games, minutes that he's played in one moment. But I'm going to go on record here as saying that Leon Bailey is not coming into Aston Villa to play the number 10 position based on what he's done in his career so far. There is no way that you can stand over the fact and say Leon Bailey is coming into play in the number 10 position because of, and you don't have anything to say, because there is no evidence of that already. What this transfer to me on the outset looks like is, and it's something I've said before, 
I think if you are sitting at home waiting for that number 10, that traditional number 10 player to come in, that D, if you think that Dean Smith needs that for this system or wants to play that play that that position for within this system, I don't think that is the correct um, narrative to have here. Dean Smith, I think, wants to have more pace on the wings. I think he knows he can always shift Jack Grealish into the center to play that 10 position if needed. Potentially, Emi Buendia can go in there uh, as well. I don't think Leon Bailey will be coming in to play that position. And I don't think we're going to see a number 10 come through the doors between now and the start of the season. I think we might see a second striker. I think we might we might see an actual out now forward. Or I think we might see Leon Bailey. I think we might even see two of those come through somebody like a julian alvarez but i wouldn't be hanging my hopes on a very specific person that's played in the central attacking midfielder position that traditional number 10 position that's played there all his life to come in to this football club between now and the start of the season once again i could be wrong they might see something they might try and make leon bailey into that into that player that number 10 player but based on what he's done in his career so far he has not played that position this is not to say that he can't be trained to play that position in the future, but based on what he's what's happened at the moment, he has not played in that position. Just wanted to get that clear because you will hear that Leon Bailey is might be coming in to play the number 10 position. He may very well be coming in to be trained up to play there in future years, but at this moment in time, there's absolutely zero evidence to back up the fact that he is he can be productive from that number 10 position. Just look at the heat maps and we'll look at these statistics in a moment as well. But based on these heat maps, it's very important, depending on the year that you select. And I selected the two years that have the most, the two years that, have, that where he started the most amount of games. So obviously in 2021, he started 30 games and we said already nine goals, eight assists. And we see that he predominantly played from the right hand side, cutting in from the right hand side on his left foot. You can see his, his uh, heat map there. It's got a very definite turn in his uh in the positioning of where he where he played and that is good to see you know we can play him on the right wing we have an opportunity to play him there on the uh, with the heat map there from 1819 he predominantly played on the left hand side if we want to move jack Grealish into the center to play a central attacking midfielder absolutely we can do that look we can put Leon Bailey on the left wing. He's played there. His second most, uh, the, the, the year that he played, his second most amount of games. Five goals, one assist. He played on that left wing. That was two years previous. The amount of growth he's had between now and then, I am going to go out on a limb and say is exponential. Leon Bailey has always been known as having latent pace. We're talking freakish, very, very, very fast player. Think of Ag Bonlohar when he first broke onto the scene. That kind of electric pace. And we know that pace plays really well in the Premier League. Now, what has happened with Leon Bailey? I've, I've, I, as I say, I've watched five games of his. Four of them were in the 2021 20, season, and one of them was in the 1819 season. And I wanted to watch that because talking to other people online, reading things that people have read, have written through the years, um, I wanted to get a sense of why people felt he has grown from the 1819 season, specifically in his defensive duties. So previously, Leon Bailey. There was a, a talking point that there was a kind of a narrative that Leon Bailey only knew how to run fast towards the opponent's goal. And I think over the years he's learned that, you know, you can defend as well. So you can run fast back towards your own goal and defend. And I think you can see that within the within the, the heat maps here. Now, is he, a to is he a brilliant defender? I'm going to say he's mediocre. He's a mediocre defender. He's not going to be like, he's not going to track back with the, with the veracity of somebody like Trezeguet. Or he's not going to be all around the field like uh, John McGinn, but he will do his job. Peter Peter Bosch, I think is how you pronounce his his name, the um, head coach of Leverkusen. Um, one of the things he did say was he needed him to be a bit more defensive minded at times and to track back. And you can see that in 1920, his his games, the amount of games he started, they lessened, and they lessened because. There was a rotation of players. Yes, there was the yes, coronavirus did have have something to do with it. With the uh, towards the end of the season, Leon Bailey didn't play much. I don't know did he have a coronavirus case, but there was a trusting of other players to play in that position once the once things got back underway. And as we know, the Bundesliga got back underway quicker than most leagues. 
but it's something that I think he has worked on and he has grown towards. Obviously, he's always going to be known for his attacking flair and his and his close control is mesmerizing. He's really good with the ball and his feet. You will see him try and not make people. You will see him do tricks. You will see him get up to fast speeds and to pace, uh, to get up to speed, should I say, when he's running with the ball. Um, watch his game. I think it was against Hertha Berlin last season. If you watch that game, you'll know what I mean. I, I think it was Harker Berlin. I hope I'm quoting the right team he played. If you look at any of his goal uh, compilations, you'll see him. He scores this absolute wonder goal. And it's he comes down the right-hand side, cuts in his left foot, and then defies the laws of physics to bend one in the top corner. Absolute screamer of a goal. Really, really, really good goal. I'm sure if you've watched any of those YouTube compilations, you've seen it. That's I, I wanted to watch that game again to see if he did have as much of a of an input in that game or was it just one lucky goal that he scored and he was really really impressive in that game and i'll tell you why and this is why i put out a tweet recently saying it's a shame that i can't actually use video to show you what he did so well in that game something aston villa have been missing well maybe not missing is but the 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 secret sauce that they would have is to be able to attack from both sides obviously we know last season we got the ball to Jack Grealish in jig time. You know, that's what we did when Jack Grealish was on the field. He would hug the left-hand touchline. Douglas Louise's job was to pick that ball up in midfield. John McGinn's job was to pick that ball up in midfield and was to spray it out to him at, at to Grealish at, at the nearest opportunity, very first opportunity. Let Grealish go and maze on his runs towards the box and uh, see what happened. That's really what our game plan was last season for a good portion of the year. Jack Grealish doesn't attack the box at pace. He uses his skill, his close control, his fast feet, but he doesn't attack the box at pace. What Leon Bailey will bring you is that skill with his feet plus his latent pace, and, and it's scary pace. He's really, really fast. But what he does is he's cute enough to know that if he hugs the touchline and the wingers pull in, that if you get the ball out to him, if he has a six or seven yard run on you, he can build up pace in that short space, uh, in that short distance, and he is very difficult to stop. He's, you have to bring him down. So if Aston Villa are creating from both wings, winning frees from both wings, and also if they have somebody who can drive at the box, that's why we don't win penalties that much. We need somebody that can absolutely drive at the box, like a Sterling. Think of a Raheem Sterling in the European Championships. How did he get his penalties? He was able to either ghost in off his wing or even play, you know ghost in to play on the, on the, the shoulder of uh, Harry Kane. And then once he got past with his pace, once he got past that defensive line, the, the opportunities were to bring him down or not, or, or, or he was getting shots on goal. Leon Bailey can bring that type of attacking impetus as well. He's very, he's very intelligent that way. He knows that he's he has the ability to cut inside in his left foot. He knows that he has the ability to build up a head of head of steam. He knows he has the ability that if somebody is playing a high line against that against Aston Villa, which sometimes when you're playing with a team that likes to get as many men behind the ball in defence as Aston Villa do, if Ali Watkins is up in, up up front in his own. The other team can play that high line, and then maybe we can we struggle to get in behind them. Just, just just simply due to a lack of pace. With Leon Bailey, that gives us that extra impetus. You know, Bertrand Traore had all the tricks and flicks and skills in the world. He scored quite a lot of goals last season, and he was, you know, he had a lot of, a lot of goal contributions. But pace was probably one of the things that he lacked. So this is why I can see a Leon Bailey coming in here. I don't see him as a replacement for Bertrand Troy. I think Bertrand Troy sees a lot of game time this season, provided he gets better from his injury. But I think Leon Bailey is a completely different animal from that point of view. And I think you're better. My, my saying, and it will be till the day I die probably, is you're better looking at these good players within your team than looking for them and see how it goes. So I'm a big proponent of what I've seen from Leon Bailey based on his statistical output, based on what I see from his fit within this team, and based on the growth mechanisms I've seen from him from 18, 19 up towards 2021, 20, specifically in defense. Now, you're not going to be blown away by his defensive capabilities, but you will see, but there has been growth, and he has understood that football is played in both directions. So let's take a little look here. I mentioned that I've broken down what games he's played, where he has played, and so on. So it's quite categorical here. When I say he's only played uh, a few games in attacking central midfield, and that that's not what anybody should base their um, 
the, based there, the the fact that he's going to come in here and play number 10 on, he's only played 173 minutes over two games in an attacking central midfield position. He's predominantly played in the attacking midfield left position, the attacking midfield right position with 47 and 37 games uh, respectively. Played a small bit in a flat back four, or, or sorry, a flat midfield four as well in the midfield right and the midfield left positions. And he has been used as a second striker slash a forward on four games as well. Ideally, I think if he is going to be moved into any position other than other than left or right right winger, I think it would be into that second striker role or into that forward position. They're just trying to like like a kind of more so even. I don't even want to get into the kind of terms of false nine and all that because I don't want to pigeonhole him in there. But I think that uh, he would be that more mobile forward who w- would predominantly be looking to pick the ball up in the channels and drive at that, um, drive at the 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 box, I suppose, to try and make things happen. Um, but look, I think if he comes to play for Aston Villa, it's going to be a wing player, left wing or right wing. And the statistics are there based on the historical starts that he's had. Bear in mind, these are all starts. These are all the starts that he's had. He's played 170 odd games. Um, He started, these are the games that he started in the minutes that he's played based off those starts as well. I think it's just important to put it in context. So let's take a look at Leon Bailey and some statistics. As I mentioned, 30 games, 25 starts last season. Uh, He's played 2,141 minutes scoring nine goals eight assists we've been through that already so what is the breakdown of his actual contribution from a statistical point of view so he had 60 shots throughout the course of last year with 23 in them on target giving him a 38.3 percent shot uh, shot success percentage and um, he's had 3.86 shot creating actions per 90 minutes so that actually puts him in the top 25 percent in europe for shot creating actions sorry the top 25 percent in europe's top five leagues should i say um for shot creating actions which is quite good um and uh, definitely something that uh that he is uh you, you know that, that he should be proud of um dribbles he's had 87 successful dribbles from 153 giving him a 57 percent dribble success rate i do think that his sample set there is huge. 153 dribbles is quite a lot of dribbles over the, over the course of you know 30 games, um, five dribbles per per game. You know, so he's been given quite a lot of a lot of freedom to do that and attacking freedom, should I say? I'd like to see his dribble success rate a small bit higher. I think the fact that he is a flair player, he tries a lot of tricks, may make. Uh, Maybe bring that down. Also, the fact that German defenses are no nonsense, but uh, you know, especially wing backs and 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 full backs, they are no nonsense. Uh, they're defend first type of full backs in the main. They're defend first type of full backs. Maybe that is bring it down. But I would like to see a six at the start of his his percentage there. Maybe 61, 62, 63 percent. Um, he does have latent pace, and as we say, as we know, within the Premier League, pace is. Uh, the great equaliser within the Premier League because of the fast nature of the way the game is played. And I think should he move to the Premier League, his dribbles will drop, but I think his success rate will go up as well based on what I've seen. His progressive distance carries are, is 3,502 over the course of last year as well. And his pressure rate is 30%, 74 uh, successful pressures from 247. So over the course of the last three years, he has pressured more. He has been a small bit more successful with his pressure. He's a mediocre defender. That is just being honest about the situation. He's not good. Like, he's still learning to be a two-way player, I think. Um, and that is something that within the Premier League, he will need to know his positioning maybe a small bit more from a defensive point of view. But, you know, we see that from wingers more often than not when they come to the Premier League. 30% pressure rate isn't horrendous, you know. It's not too bad at all. I think really where the rubber meets the road on Leon Bailey is the plus or minus goals with or without him in the team. So when Leon Bailey is in the team, he has a net positive of 0.73 goals per 90 minutes. Meaning that Leverkusen scored goals with him in the team last season. 0.73, uh, plus 0.73 goals per 90 minutes is quite, quite a, it's actually a very good mark to have. Um, the team scored 42 goals with him with, it, with him in the team last season. Um. So some interesting pieces there on Leon Bailey. There are some nice stats that that uh, tally up well, I think, with number one, the Premier League, and, and, and also from what I thought the player was based on seeing him play. So once again, these statistics 
all come in to try and see if I'm maybe missing something of what I've seen on the field in the five games I've seen him play, or maybe if they corroborate something and I can say, yeah, I absolutely saw that in the field. So it's not just for a confirmation bias piece, it's also to see if I've missed anything on the field. I think from my own point of view, the plus or minus goals with or without him in the team is certainly something I would have missed in the field. Um, not because he didn't contribute in the game, but just because it's so high. It's really high with him on the team. Now, what would be a For the Love of Paul McGrath transfer podcast if I didn't show uh, Leon Bailey against one of the current Aston Villa players? And I wanted to take somebody like Jack Grealish. And the reason being is that Leon Bailey could very well end up on our left wing this season. Not saying Jack Grealish is going to leave. I personally think Jack Grealish is going to stay. But I wanted to put him up against Jack Grealish here for the simple fact that Number one, they had similar amount of starts. They had a similar amount of minutes. And Jack, Jack Grealish is our talisman. So last year, we suffered massively when Jack Grealish wasn't on the field. And I wanted to compare the two people. Was it apples for apples or was it apples for oranges? And what we tend to see here is that obviously Leon Bailey had more goals with nine goals. Uh, Jack Grealish had more assists with 10 assists. But the shot percentages. So uh, you'll see here that the shot percentage is quite similar. Jack Grealish, actually, Jack Grealish only had a 34.7% shot, uh, shot accuracy percentage. He took way less shots. You can see here last year, Jack Grealish only like took took uh, um, took, took a, a, a few shots last year, a, a, a small amount of shots. Shot creating actions were more or less similar. The dribble percentage, Jack Grealish, as I mentioned, Jack Grealish's dribble percentage was 65.6%, massively inflated on, on what Leon Bailey's was. But Leon Bailey had a huge sample set. He was asked to dribble an awful lot more uh, last season, which is interesting considering when we gave the ball to Jack Grealish, he was our predominant uh, ball carrier. And you can see that in his progressive distance. Jack Grealish absolutely dwarfs uh, Leon Bailey's progressive distance there as well and his pressure rate is pretty similar now Jack Grealish when Jack Grealish wasn't on the field when, so when we played uh, when Aston Villa played uh, without Jack Grealish in the field um, he had a plus sorry when he, when we played with him on the field should I say he had a plus 0 0.71 goals per 90 um, in, in the in the positive bracket so we were we scored 0 0.71 more goals with him on the field Bayer Lever Leverkusen scored 0 0.73 goals when they were on the field are we seeing the correlation here about how important they were from a productive point of view, from a cre goal creation point of view? I think that's quite important. And it's definitely something that I want to, wanted to get through on, uh, on this podcast itself. Leon Bailey, while not being the main man at Leverkusen, was, was pretty productive, but he does have his flaws. He's not, I'm not saying he's going to be Jack Grealish. I'm just saying that based statistically, he's a completely different player from Jack Grealish, the way he uses, he's all tricks and flicks, he's all um, pace, he's all almost like bullish type running, is, is what, what I would describe Leon Bailey with, with, with fleeting feet. Jack Grealish is your, like your, your just gifted, player you know he's he's Aston Villa's best player I'm not saying that the two of them are going to be similar or going to be exactly the same I'm saying that the complement of the two of them is going to be really interesting when they do or if, if Leon Bailey does sign for Aston Villa and it's going to be really tantalizing to say the least a couple of the other things on Leon Bailey as well um a couple of other things there on on Leon Bailey is that he is uh he he has enlisted the help of A.D. Ward. Now, people might remember A.D. Ward. A.D. Ward was the guy who got Sterling's move from Liverpool to Man City. Leon Bailey has been kind of, he has been quoted as saying that England is where he wants to be. Maybe he's not as happy in the Bundesliga. I don't think that, the Bund I, I think he sees the wood from the trees and that he's gone to the Bundesliga. He's not going to sign for Bayern Munich at the moment. And realistically, what are the hopes of him? You know, the Bundesliga is really kind of a closed shop. It's Bayern Munich. It's maybe Dortmund. It's maybe another team like Eintracht Frankfurt last year. They came from nowhere. So maybe Leon Bailey kind of sees himself as being tight cast tight cast within that uh, Bayer Leverkusen team. He has been, you know, quoted as saying England is the end goal for him. So why not come to an Aston Villa team where you can actually buy into the to the structure that we have here? We have a very, very family-orientated, group-orientated uh, coaching staff that we have here. We're on the up. We're seen as a progressive team from a youth point of view. We're also seen as a progressive team with, with like, players that like Jack Grealish on the team. 
you know, the best way to keep Jack Grealish is to get more players like uh, to, uh, of of a high level in and to progress up the up the table. I think Leon Bailey could be swayed by by the Aston Villa project. I certainly do. He's been quoted to to be interested in maybe going to live. Uh, sorry, a, a Leicester or two, which which I don't think he'd see as much game time, or um to an Everton, which I think Everton would be actually crying out for him. He would be someone that would actually really work well in that Everton style, uh, in that Everton um team. Well, based on on on, on what was played last season with, with Everton, Ancelotti, and obviously Ancelotti isn't there anymore. He would fit into that style. I think Aston Villa is probably the best best place for him to come. I think he could grow. I think he could be a box office player for Aston Villa. And to be honest with you, I think Aston Villa will be a, crim- a really, really scary outfit with Leon Bailey's pace on that right-hand side. Or maybe be it on that right-hand side, be it on that left-hand side with those through balls from Amy Brindia, whether we're playing a 4-3-3 with a flat three in midfield like we did against Wal- Walsall for good periods. That's where Brindia's passes came from. Do you imagine his passes? And if he had two people to pass to with a Leon Bailey and uh, and uh, and Ollie Watkins up there, I think it would be pretty, pretty scary. Um, so all in all, while I, I'm really on the fence as to whether Leon Bailey will actually happen, if it did happen, I would be very, very, very happy because he does have a lot of attributes that I feel this team is missing, namely his pace. He he has the un- unpredictability that Bertrand Troy has, but not as unpredictable. You know, he's not going to play a blind pass, rake it right across the other side of the field in his own half. That's not what Leon Bailey is going to do, but he does have that unpredictability to beat a man and to drive on towards the box. So all in all, I think it's positive that we're linked. I think the 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 money is 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 pretty doable at thirty million. Whether he comes in or whether he doesn't come in, I think is uh, is completely up for debate. But we will watch and we will see. And uh, as I say, hopefully Aston Villa sign a few more players. And if they sign players to the ilk, to the standard, and to the reputation of somebody like a Leon Bailey, well, then that is going to be a positive based on what I've seen him play on the field. So thanks so much everybody for watching thanks so much everybody for listening please subscribe on youtube if you're not done so already we'll be doing more transfer pieces like this really really appreciate everything you do for the show and uh you can catch us on twitter at, at love McGrath pod i'm really excited we also have stoke coming up today i'm recording this on saturday we've stoke coming up today as well so i'm gonna let you guys go and all that's left to say is up the villa <laughs>